Hello guys, we are going to continue with our third video for Organic Chemistry Chapter 2 where we are going to continue with the sources of hydrocarbon and its effects to environment. Okay, okay. so uh, main sources of hydrocarbon usually comes from underground deposited crude oil or natural gas. So crude oil contains a lot of alkane and various hydrocarbon which are physically mixed. So therefore, these hydrocarbons are usually separated uh, are usually separated by oil refinery fire fractional distillation methods. Now, um, there will be different type of portions inside the fractional distillations here. So, um, the separation does not end that in here because large quantities of the uh, very low portion of the fractional distillation, such as paraffin oil or bitumen, uh, are usually the pro produced but they have limited usage. So, uh, in order to make full use of all these um, seldom used material, so usually we have to another major treatment which is also known as a cracking process. So, later I'll introduce one by one, but that all this means. Uh, okay, so first, this is a fractional distillation and the columns. So, we have a few examples in here. So, uh, in here, uh, as we studied during this um, phase equilibria last time, uh, during semester one, so the one going up higher will be the one with a lower uh, molecular mass. So for the first portion here, the highest portion will be from C1 to C4, that is petroleum gas, which is usually used for house cooking gas. Though the second portion here between C5 and C10 is used as fuel for automobile vehicles. And then if you have third, the third column in here is naphtha, used to synthesize different petrochemical and then kerosene is used as fuel for jet engine or oil stove and then diesel is used to foil of uh, heavy vehicles and then um, lubricating oil is down there so uh, it is used as lubricating oil making wax and polishing car uh, paraffin is used mostly for ship and power station and last but not least bitumen is used as tar paving for the road surface and also coating on the underground so as going down uh, you can see the number of carbon eventually increase uh, okay so these are the uh, a few of uh, portions that can be separated via fractional distillation so as we explained just now uh, most of the time especially the last two portion which is um a paraffin and also bitumen they have very limiting usage so therefore it's further uh, treated with another process which is cracking process so uh, for cracking of hydrocarbon they can be cracked via two methods uh, which is known as a uh, thermal cracking and also catalytic cracking so let's have a look one by one what is the difference between thermal cracking and catalytic cracking so for thermal cracking uh, it is using high temperature so homolytic fission usually take place in here and most of the time uh, the product is unbranched alkane with alkene so for example if you break into uh, if you're breaking the cane c10 h22 so you break into propene and also heptane uh, if you have uh, it can also be possible to break to butane and hex, uh, hexane so if um you are dealing if uh if you are dealing with uh, alkane crack the alkane crack into two different products usually one is alkane and one is alkene if break into three product then one will be alkane two will be alkene so this is the first one huh? so the second uh, cracking will be what we so called as a catalytic cracking so in catalytic cracking using zeolite or aluminum oxide as a catalyst huh, carbon cracking can occur at a lower temperature uh, compared to the thermal cracking just now okay okay so a uh, difference from a thermal cracking a uh, catalytic cracking produce more branch lah, okay so um Relative octane number is then measured based on the number of branch in here. So uh, this can be achieved by using catalytic cracking uh, to produce a greater number, uh, a greater run numbers of the uh, alkane for uh, different fields. Okay. So for example, if you crack C10 H22, you might crack into alkene and also a highly branch uh, C8 H18. Okay. So this is the difference between thermal cracking and also catalytic cracking. Okay, so then uh, finishing about the processes of all this crude oil, we are going to see the pro environmental problem caused by all this hydrocarbon. Uh, hydrocarbon contamination in environment is a very serious problem. Huh? So uh, because environmental problem caused by petroleum is great concern because they are all toxic into for all forms of uh, daily life products, um, all form of life. So uh, short term exposure of unburned petrol will cause nausea, uh, dizziness, 
breathing difficulties to human. So long term expo uh, long term exposure may cause damage to any system, lah, Okay, and then uh, side products such as carbon monoxide, okay, uh, nitrogen oxide, NOx are also released to air. Where we know that carbon monoxide is poisonous to gas, uh, poisonous to human, uh, and can cause death if the concentration of CO is very high. Uh, NOx is also hazardous to human uh, and can form photochemical smog which irritate our eyes or impair our visions. Okay, so uh, most of the major contributor of all these are uh, of unburned petroleum, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen monoxide are uh, all uh, comes from automobile vehicle uh, such as car, lorry, buses, and ships. Uh. So to overcome this problem, uh, they will equip with uh, what we call as a catalytic converter. So where is catalytic converter usually equipped? Catalytic converter is usually equipped uh, just in the middle between go before going to the exhaust part. Okay, so an efficient catalytic converter has two purposes. One is to oxidize carbon monoxide and unburned hydrocarbon to become carbon dioxide and water, and it is also used to reduce uh, NOx, uh, NO and NO2 to nitrogen and oxygen, which are unharmful gases. So, uh, in catalytic converter, uh, they ca it contains precious metals such as platinum, palladium, or rhodium. You can also contain some transition metals such as copper oxide or chromium. Three oxide. So uh, as we described just now, la, um, the uh, chemical reaction take place inside all these catalytic converter are by either oxidizing carbon monoxide to become carbon dioxide or reduce the NOx gas into nitrogen and oxygen. So NOx can be uh, monoxide or dioxide, so it depends on what you use it for. La. And last but not least, uh, you have, uh, you have, we have some unburned hydrocarbon, so the unburned hydrocarbon will also be converted to become carbon dioxide and water. So uh, this is all the uh, things that we can use for catalytic converter. Okay, okay. So that is all for the uh, effect of the environments and how do we overcome them. Okay, so finishing this part, we will intro start to introduce another hydrocarbon compound, which is known as alkene. Okay, so uh, alkene are hydrocarbon with a molecule contain carbon carbon double bond. Uh, so some uh, uh, name for this family is called as olefin uh, because uh, ethene also more more known as ethylene the, is the simplest olefin uh, which can be used to produce olefin gas uh, because uh, when you um, treat it with chlorine uh, you produce a liquid oil which has a, a yellow color la. Okay, so all alkene has the general formula of CnH2n. So these are uh, below here lies a few examples of alkene, simple alkene, starting from ethene, propene, book two in, and pen two in. Okay, okay. To understand better alkene, so let's have a look more about nomenclature of alkene. So these are the examples of alkene from two carbon to seven carbon. Okay, so if you have two carbon, uh, alkene because of the unsaturated C double bond C must at least contain two carbon. So uh, you have the simplest which is ethene. So ethene only have one isomer structural I uh, formula of CH two double bond CH two. So uh, if you have uh, with the molecular formula C two H four. So for propene, propene with three carbon has also only one structural formula of CH two CH CH three. So the molecular formula is C three. H6. However, for butane with four number of carbon, it can exhibit as two different uh, straight chain. It can be but one in or but two in. Okay, so the formula is C4H8. So same goes with pentene. So pentene also have two iso uh, straight chain isomer of pen one in and pen two in with the formula C5H10. And then uh, hexene will have three isomer, namely hex one in hex 2 in and also hex 3 in okay uh, all of them has the same molecular formula of cch12 and finally for heptene so heptene you have seven carbon namely uh, hep 1 in hep 2 in and also hep 3 in uh. so these are the isomer with the formula c7h14 okay okay so uh, for time being that is all for the uh, introductions towards alkene will continue on our next video lesson about how to name and their isomerism. Okay, with that, see you next video.